So I had uh, started last uh, time, we had started to look at uh, the higher matrices, which are finally, so we're arriving at uh, going backward from the higher Dunkin diagrams uh, to, uh, to in the case AN when you have matrices. And uh, uh, let's emphasize here that they generalize directly the usual case. So in the usual case, if you have, for instance, n equal to 4 uh, for SL2, you will have four elements on the diagonal. This is a period. And uh, a matrix is given, I mean, a matrix element, a matrix unit, is given by an, uh, by an arrow on the diagonal in any direction, so any pair ij. Now, uh, in the higher case, as you can, and uh, after that, you can uh, take the corresponding thing. Here, it's, the arrow is going downwards, so this would be underneath, and this is a correspondent, the corresponding ij here. Yes, and, uh, Similarly, we take a period n to the power k, k is uh, uh, n to the power d uh, minus, so uh, d, let's put here r. r is a rank, the um, underlying the subjacent rank, that would be uh, n minus one, for uh, uh, S, uh, L, N. And uh, uh, now what you see here is a higher matrix. The interesting, so we're going to, uh, to take then I, J in, uh, so we're going to take the I, J in a period actually in a period of uh, uh, subjacent roots so for sl uh, uh, 3 again uh, new part this is uh, such a period so this is n by n and uh, uh, that's, that's precisely what we had uh, last time and what you see on the screen, an n by n period. And here you take uh, any pair ij, so this we'll call this diag, and you take ij in the diagonal, and you have a, an eij, a, a higher matrix unit, which behaves, so after a lot of uh, thought, I decided to uh, give this the absolutely uh, uh, usual behavior, namely to, uh, to let eij times ekl is equal to Kronecker of IK uh, EIL. Yes, so uh, up to here, everything uh, would, seem, uh, would seem the same, but what we're going to have is an action. So we're going to define now EIJW, where W is in the vial group, in the subjacent vial group. And I started to define it uh, last time. Uh, the idea is the following. Uh, well, first of all, once again, the motivation for this is that for this kind of definition is that uh, uh, 
equalities between the HIJs are very sparse. They are very special to lines, all, and they involve a very large number of terms. Uh, so they are not suitable for, uh, for uh, a direct definition of a law that way, like the usual ones. However, for SL2, however, we're going to put everything interesting in this, uh, in this uh, um, involution. So let me, uh, let's recall how this goes. You take, uh, we're going to choose uh, choose a sequence of simple roots. So ordered simple roots. Yes, this is more more than uh, just a, uh, a quiver, and uh, uh, use use uh, their reflections the associated reflections. So uh, here, here are uh, two such, uh, and um, we're going to make our i and j correspond to the uh, element, so I will correspond to the identity, will be labeled by identity in the vial group. And J will be uh, indexed by the corresponding um, Coxeta element in, uh, in W in the vial group, the product of the reflections. And uh, so let's do this here. These are the two reflections. So this would be, and let me write the permutations. So this would be one, two, three. Uh, remember that there are two actions for the vial group. One is to the left and one is to the right. So these reflections act on the left. And this is a reflection in one, two. It substitutes one and two, the digits. And this is uh, two, three. So this substitutes the uh, digits two and three. So if we substitute one and two, we'll get here two, one, three. Uh, and uh, here uh, we'll substitute uh, uh, one and, uh, no, this is, this is going to be one and three. And uh, so this, this is, uh, uh, this will give you two, three, one. That's what we want. Uh, this is going to be now a coxeta, a coxeta element. And the point here is that uh, these, uh, the perpendicular to these reflections form a basis. So this, uh, this picture is unique is completely determined by i and j. And uh, after that, if we want to uh, uh, start, so the, the labels of the vertices are done with a right action, for the right action, so this would be two, one, three, this would be uh, uh, one, uh, two, no, two, one, three, sorry, it, it is going to be three, two, one, and uh, here, three, one, two, and here, uh, one, uh, three, two. Yes, and if we want to act with uh, an element W, then we're going to start from W and apply exactly the same reflections. So we, 
start from an element w, we apply the same reflections in the same order. So here, if we start from here, we'll go in one step uh, at uh, 3, 1, 2 with the first reflection, and then with the second, we'll go here. So this is... Uh, This is uh, uh, I, this is W, so if this is, let's write it as, uh, so this is a pair IJ, this is W of IJ. So the, this, uh, this way, the action of W depends on both I and J, yes? And it applies uh, in any case. This could be degenerate, for instance. Uh, the I and J could be the same, and in that case, you, uh, uh, the element will be fixed. And it uh, generalizes in the case uh, of, uh, of a line. If you have here I and J, then uh, I and J, then the... the uh, the permutations here are 1, 2, and 2, 1. This is 1 and 2. And, uh, and you get exactly the reversal of the arrow for the uh, non-trivial element in W. And now we're going to... Uh, we, with this, we can define uh, the higher commutator, which is... Uh, the following, we, we will take uh, need to take for matrices now, to which it extends linearly, the higher commutator A, B, and we'll denote maybe we'll put a W here. The whole vial group can define it as uh, is a sum, maybe of epsilon of W, the sine, uh, times uh, uh, A W, uh, B W, and then we'll apply W inverse to the result. Yes, so this is the usual multiplication, but you see if we conjugate it with W, then it's going to multiply in a different direction. And uh, since the Jacobi identity is a matter of associativity, we won't have it straight uh, out, but for certain cases only, we'll discuss this at some other time. Uh, what I would like to show now is something unexpected and which uh, uh, related to this matrix. And after that, for the, to the rest of the semester, we'll discuss how, such mat how we can construct the gelfand settling representation, how such matrices, uh, how this transformation is uh, represented, the matrices with this transformation are represented on it. So once again, the crucial element here is this coxet, uh, this uh, special coxet element, which is chosen once and for all. So once, uh, now, uh, here's the observation. Suppose that you take, uh, well, I'm going to uh, show it on, on an example, but, uh, it works uh, in the general case with exactly the same proof. So suppose that we take, uh, uh, <coughs> we do the following operation. We take a core multiplication of a matrix A. I'm going to define this in a moment. And then we apply uh, uh, so we take W to be the uh, to be one of the uh, one of the main reflections this means exactly the ones that we use there 
in uh, our W, and then we apply W tensor W to this, and then finally we apply the multiplication again. And in that case, what we are going to get is the projection onto the space of uh, uh, the space in which, uh, um, well, it's going to be a projection onto a subspace of A, and you'll see. Um, so it's a projection onto a subspace, onto, onto a partial diagonal of this A, uh, namely the partial diagonal in which uh, uh, the coordinates of uh, I and uh, J will be in the, in the direction of that reflection will be the same. So let me, let's do the computation and then we'll conclude. So first of all, what is a co-multiplication? If you have uh, so co-multiplication, the co-multiplication of Eij is equal to the sum of all k's of Eik tensor uh, uh, Ekj. So this is simply the linear dual of the multiplication. And this extends linearly. So now, uh, let's do that. We're going to take uh, uh, this co-multiplication. So basically, these are the, the uh, so these are all uh, products which uh, give uh, Eij in a way. And uh, let's do a picture here. So we have an I we uh, have an ij and uh, let's put uh, here k somewhere so this uh, we should use the same uh, color scheme so this is eij and we decompose it into an EIK, IK, and KJ. And uh, now let's uh, write the, uh, the hexes, the corresponding hexes for, for both of them. This is for IK, and this is the one for KJ. So here we go up, uh, here this is going to be a bit longer, and uh, uh, we're going to have the same picture here. Yes, so this is IK and KJ, and uh, yeah, so let's... These are the main reflections. And let's say that we uh, start here. So this is uh, the labels here, one, two, three. Uh, and this is one, three, uh, two. 
And uh, now this is uh, 213, we said. And uh, uh, this is going to be um, 231 here, and this is again 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 3, and uh, 2, 3, 1. And now we're going to start at 2, 1, 3 and see what happens. Uh, I'm going to make the, the resulting thing orange. If we, go, if we start from here, we apply the first reflection, we arrive here, and then the second. Once again, from here, we apply the first reflection, the number one, and the second is this reflection, so we'll arrive here. So this would be the first one. Uh, let's call this I prime, and this is uh, K prime. And from here, similarly, we'll, go, we'll start from 2, 1, 3, and... Uh, We'll arrive again, we take the first reflection and then the second, and we'll arrive here. So this is going to be uh, K double prime and uh, J, J double prime, let's say. And now we take the product of these two. So this means, so, for the product, the, the two must match. And now notice that uh, one of them, so this is in the direction of uh, this uh, axis uh, from K, yes? So K double prime. So for the product, non-zero, this means that uh, K must k prime must be equal to k double prime. And if we take, uh, uh, now if we look here at k prime, k prime is in this other direction. So the only way in which k prime is equal to k double prime is, is if, uh, K prime is equal to K double prime is equal to K. And so of course this could be deformed, but this remains that K, K double prime is in the direction of one reflection and K, K prime is in the direction of another. And uh, the only way in which the, the two can be equal is if they're on two different axes, if both uh, are equal to K because these two directions intersect only at K. And uh, in that case, um, what that means, if K is equal to K prime, you see then, uh, then uh, uh, I is equal to I prime. So K is equal to K prime implies I is equal to I prime. And K is equal to K double prime implies that, uh, that uh, um, we we'll leave it at that. K is equal to K double prime we keep. And now what we have is that uh, the, uh, the original, the first arrow, I, K, so this I, I prime, I is equal to I prime, so this means that this is in the direction in, in, in one of the crystallographic directions, do you see? So, uh, Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. And uh, so this is because I is equal to I prime. And then K is equal to K prime. 
k is equal to k double prime uh, says that the rest continues in the same direction. So the conclusion is that uh, uh, i j is uh, is in the plane uh, of the reflection to of the reflection one, two, uh, acting, of course, this time acting on the right. So, these hexes are both degenerate, uh, degenerate to triangles, and the picture will be, uh, will be uh, something like this. One triangle followed by the other. And uh, in particular, I and J need to be exactly in this direction. And if we get that, then we need to divide by N, and we'll get exactly a projection onto the pairs I, J, which have this uh, direction. So this is n times, uh, actually n to the power, uh, yes, it's n times the projection of A onto the, uh, uh, onto the uh, W acting on the right. projection on a subspace SW, where SW is the space of A such that uh, uh, W acting on the right, on the left of A equals to A. So it's a diagonal subspace. Uh, let's put here delta W, so this is a diagonal. So, what this, so this holds for each of the original projections, actually also for the affine, the affine one, but we all need that. The conclusion is that uh, if we know this action of W, entirely, we, we can determine the diagonal of the matrices up to a permutation, because we, uh, you see, if this is our uh, higher matrix, then uh, uh, the first, so this operation, here, the, we, we get the projection onto these lines, so I and J are on the same uh, line this way, and then on the same next line. So if we apply the projections in turn, they commute and they project onto the diagonal of the matrix. So this means that uh, if we know the whole vial group, we know too much, because we know the diagonal of the matrix, which means that we know basis for the matrix. So it's good if we work with the matrix in a basis, but not for the matrix as an operator. So therefore, we're going to define now the, uh, we're going to define a product using, using, uh, uh, so we're going to define the product of A, uh, B, uh, C, and uh, um, 
and so on. So this is the uh, subjacent uh, coxeter number. as the trace of A times B times B, uh, the action of uh, on B with, uh, with uh, a coxet element times C coxet square, uh, D coxet third, and so on. So, uh, Uh, let's see what this would do to a matrix unit. So if you have a, uh, a matrix unit, then uh, if we apply the same matrix unit, And this is a, an IJ, so this is our EIJ, EIJ. Then uh, uh, when we apply the coxet element, they are arranged head to tail. Remember that they were representing a coxet element. So this is EIJ coxet and EIJ coxeta square. So that's an equilateral triangle, and that picture generalizes the. Uh, 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 I mean, this shows that if you if you have a matrix unit, uh, the uh, EIJ 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 is non-zero. because this closes. So this is a way to define a, uh, uh, an ear product, which is using the, the Coxeter the transform, which is actually very close to the uh, cyclic traces, which have been used in mathematics uh, for quite a while. Uh, Now, I wanted to show you on uh, here. Yes, it's true. I, I should have. I should use the the uh, room controls a bit better. Yes. So uh, as you can see there, this is a, a higher matrix. Last time we didn't have time really to look at it properly. Uh, this one, uh, uh, can you see it corresponds exactly to the diagonal that we had built before, four by four. And here you can see the diagonal. So the diagonal is put here on the diagonal. We can put uh, actually the elements on the diagonal. These are coordinates on the diagonal. Zero, one, three. The coordinates here have sum equal to four, as you can see, yes? So the, those are the elements on the diagonal. And uh, if we move the, uh, if we turn the matrix around, so at some point I noticed that, uh, that uh, the, that there was a 3D picture. Can you see now the diagonal as a lattice? Yes. You can see here is exactly the root lattice of uh, SL3. Yes. And you can see that we go from uh, 0, 1, 3. This is our element. It goes from 0, 1, 3 to 1, 2, 1. Yes. On this, you can uh, change uh, you can change the, uh, so let's make it first a, a bit bigger so we can, we have room to, uh, to change the coefficients. Yes, and uh, uh, look uh, here at some, uh, uh, at some pictures. 
So this is a uh, this is a case in which the hex degenerates, as you can see. And again, it goes from one three two 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 one three. Yes. So the EIJ is here. One three two 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 one three. Yes. If we turned it, we could see it. You see, it's one three two 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 one three. So yeah. Exactly. The green line uh, is the usual HIJ, yes, uh, and it gives you the matrix unit. Exactly. Thank you. So you can see here, this is a matrix unit, yes, and it's written on it that it goes from 213 to 132, yes, and here are the other, the vile conjugates of it. Yes, the other, the other five. And you can see how they appear. So you see the, uh, uh, you go from, uh, from 1, 3, 2, 2, 2, 1, 3, yes, and, uh, and uh, uh, you go, uh, so you apply the two reflections in order. Now let's go again to the original one. Let's see what those reflections were. So if you go here, you can see that uh, the reflections are the, so this is the original EIJ. And look, the reflections should be the two underneath, uh, if I remember well. So this is, uh, um, so if you would start, for instance, from here, if you start from here, yes, uh, so, it, to arrive here, you, you take the first reflection and then the second. So, these are the two reflections, one, the red, and the blue. Yes? Uh, and now, if you, are in a, if you start, for instance, from here, where my cursor is, then you're going to apply first the red reflection, do you see? And then the blue one, and the blue one would take you here. Yes? So if you start from this point, you're going to arrive down, and uh, the corresponding matrix unit is this one here. Do you see it? So you go, once again, you go on the red, then parallel to the blue. Yes? And you get this way, this matrix unit. Uh, so I'm going to leave uh, for next time. I uh, I didn't do today, but I, I'm going to. We're going to do it uh, next uh, Friday. The proof that, uh, which is actually quite easy, that this is an action of the vial group. So uh, that's the important part. Once again, let's. Uh, so let's. Uh, uh, let us let me show you another few cases. It's a degenerate case. Yes. So here uh, the I and J have. Uh, this is a partial diagonal case. Yes. The I and J have one coordinate in common. Uh, let's look uh, what how this thing looks uh, here. Uh, and let's figure what is uh, if we can see what is that coordinate. Uh, can you see, this is written as a, as a tensor here. Yes, it's actually exactly the size of the Riemann tensor, 4 by 4 times 4 by 4, yes? And uh, can you see uh, how are these two on a diagonal? In the tensor product. Well, Look, they're not in a diagonal in this 4x4 four four matrix, but they are in the big blocks. Do you see they're in the same, they're in the big block, which is diagonal, yes? So in principle, you choose here I and J in different, uh, uh, you see here again, but here, let's see, this is a bit more subtle, this is a third coordinate K which, uh, which uh, is diagonal. So here you can see also uh, the third coordinate is the, uh, is, uh, uh, no, 
Yes, it's the third coordinate which is which is the same for these two for 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 uh, uh, this for the green point. Yes, so the green point it uh, yes. Yeah, so let's see if we look at the diagonal. Yes, you can see the, the third coordinate here. They're in the same third direction. Do you see? So, um, let me ask you now if you have any questions or comments. You mentioned the tensor, what, what is the... Uh, no, it's just a fact here that it has several indices. We'll, we'll find the Riemann tensor later in the representation theory. So, uh, yeah, you have a question? Okay, yeah. This human tensor is not the one related to the curvature. It's just no, this is not the one related to the curvature. It's just the same. It's just the same size, that's what I was mentioning, that it's a 4x4 four four and 4x4, four four, yes? So it's not the one uh, directly related to, that will appear in the representation theory, uh, the, the curvature. So what you can see here is, the, is exactly uh, this, uh, uh, the action, which is not, uh, not obvious otherwise, but uh, um, yes, so, uh, um, Exactly. We'll get to that when we uh, study not these, but when we study uh, the crystallography. Yeah, no, here I was just mentioning that it's a 4x4 four four times a 4x4. Four four. So this is, uh, uh, yes. Um, Okay, and uh, once again, well, let me, rather than, uh, uh, so uh, le let's mention here that the, uh, that, uh, uh, the important thing for the action of the, uh, for the action of the vial group is the following. So uh, theorem, uh, the, uh, the map X goes into uh, I mean, A goes into AW, defined before, is, for W in the Weil group, is an action of W. So it's a representation of W. So the product goes into the product. Yes? And uh, what I would like to emphasize here is that once... Um, let me lift the blackboard. So, Uh, what you recognize here, so, is uh, exactly our, uh, uh, so this was a higher root. That we talked about before. So this appears in the construction of the map W. If, uh, if it's not, if the, if we are in a non-degenerate situation, exactly like in the usual case, 
where you have uh, the root Eij if i is different from j. So if i is equal to j, then, uh, then you have a degenerate root. Uh, one important thing to note here is that each root, each root, each higher root, for instance, for a2, uh, appears uh, six times when you do the count. Uh, so roughly, uh, let, let, I mean, you can complete the computation, but roughly what we have for the, uh, uh, for the higher roots are a product. Uh, I mean, the, the point is that we, uh, our higher root always starts from this point. So this point is distinguished, the bottom, the main vial chamber. And here it could start from any vial chamber. Any of these could be I and J. So, uh, and uh, the main observation here is so, once again, uh, do you see, we, you saw, I wanted to give that example just to show you also how you multiply things graphically, yes? So the HIJs do not match except for the vertex J, yes, equal to K, right? Uh, now here, the, the point is that these reflections, the main reflections act on the left, on the right, on the left, yes, and the reflections in the numbers, so the numbers here, one, two, three, one, three, two, and so uh, one, two, three, excuse me, uh, two, one, three, yes, these act on the left. So, Two one three and two three one. Yes. So the point is that if you start from somewhere else, which is what uh, we were saying, and if we use the same reflection, so this would go first this way, and then from here you'd use a second one. Yes. Then the reflections. Uh, I mean, if we build, so instead of these two, we have these two, they use actually exactly the same reflections in the same order. So when we start from this, from I prime to J prime, then uh, we're going to get the same hex, so the same permitohedron, if we start from I prime to J prime. Uh, and uh, uh, the only, so this will be, uh, we'll do it uh, next time. So this would be, um, the only thing is that on the new permitohedron, all the permutations are multiplied by the starting point. So this is here, for instance, uh, two, one, three. Yes, and uh, now this is uh, three, three to one, so, and this would be three to one times two, three, one. So all the permutations on the new permitohedron would be just multiplied, but the permitohedron will remain the same. So the point is that uh, uh, if we continue to act, so if we compose two such, uh, such operations, we get the operation corresponding to the product of the Ws. And I should stop here for now. And let's. Uh, uh, so here you can see a diagonal for the uh, SL4. Yes, so this is how the diagonal looks like. This is a period of the roots of SL4 in green. Yes? Yeah.
so that I have a question. I couldn't go through the proof here. Just from there, you, you compute this, this composition, but why? How, how do you prove this? Uh, you take comb multiplication, then you take the action of the well group, then you take multiplication, and then finally you get the projection onto. Yes. Uh, oh, you mean for that part? Yes. I, I don't right. know how, how you prove that. Well, the, the proof um, is that, um, uh, you, I mean, you look at the, in, you, you, you sum over all the intermediate elements k. So first of all, that's a linear map. So it's enough to check it on matrix units. Uh, for a matrix unit, this is a linear map. Or the co-multiplication and the multiplications are, uh, are linear. So it's enough to check it on matrix unit. If you take a matrix unit, then uh, the proof is that you look at the intermediate point. So you put the intermediate point k. You see you map sum of e i k tends to e k j. And the proof is that k must be in uh, uh, k prime. So the, k, the image of k and the, in the first hex and in the second hex must be in, uh, in two diff on two uh, hyperplanes, which intersect only in k. So the, the only... Uh, uh, the only uh, uh, possibility is when k prime is equal to k double prime is equal to k. And from that one, it's very easy to show, you see, if k is equal to k prime, uh, then, uh, uh, then uh, uh, i must be equal to, uh, if k is equal to k double, okay, k is equal to k double prime we use, but k is, is equal to k prime, yes? It means that in the original picture, uh, k was equal to, uh, uh, oh, uh, I think, yes. In the original picture, it meant that the first one is degenerate as well. So, uh, so uh, k was equal to k double prime, but uh, i prime, uh, let's see, uh, so let me recheck the computation, sorry. So what we get here is that k must be equal to, so let, let me check uh, here the picture, one, two, three goes into uh, to, so we start from here, one, two, three goes into two, one, three, and here. So what we have is that k must be equal to uh, k prime, must be equal to k double prime. So these two segments are zero. And if k is equal to k prime, then uh, um, when we go backwards, then... Uh, uh, 